Hey there, everybody. Good morning. I am really excited to be here this morning and hope you can um, join in and stick around this morning because I'll do a demo and got some talking to do and show you around the studio. I'll give y'all a chance to get joined in. Um, hope you're having a happy day so far and looking forward to a pretty weekend. Um, so y'all just come on in. Hey, everybody. So good to see you. Like I said yesterday on my first live video ever, I, I um, just want to see you in person so bad. I wish we were together somewhere painting and talking about art, so much fun. But I wanna thank the Museum of Fine Arts for helping me to do this and, and allow me the opportunity to, to actually get on here and paint and share my art with you, share my story with you. Boy, I miss the museum being open, that is for sure. Um, I miss the museum, miss ASF, and and all of the the beauty out there, and hope everybody's doing doing well. So let's just get started here, and um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I am an oil painter. I paint full time, and I am so thankful <laughs> that I can do that for a living. Um, it's all I ever wanted to do. And I'm so happy that I can do it now. Sometimes I can't even believe it when I say it, you know. Um, I spent a lot of time doing other things, that good jobs, and um, I was thankful to have them as well. But I know God's timing is perfect. And when this door opened for me to be able to paint full time, I, I didn't skip through it. I ran through it with my arms flying in the air because it is the best life. And I just love that I get to share this with, with you and share it through this crazy time, too. We need some beauty, don't we, out there? So, um, uh, let's see. I, I think I'll now just show you around the studio. And let's see. Let me get this camera flipped around. Let's see. Let me try that again. Okay. First of all, this is what we'll be painting this morning. Not John over there in the corner. <laughs> He's going to help me this morning. Uh, but these, these flowers. I have a tiny little studio. Um... It is an extra room in my house, and I recently had a studio with my friend Ruthie Carlson, which we closed last year, but, um, so I had to find a place for all this stuff, right? <laughs> well, I managed to do it, and I want to share it with you just because I want to show you how, to, how I had to maximize this space, and it might help other people in this same predicament, you know? It's like, we're not all blessed with a lot of space for this kind of thing. Here's a little table I have. I use a lot of baskets and things for storage and um, even little little fun things like this, vintage type things. Um, if you come over here, I have this old cart and I love to use toolboxes and things like that. Bags under here that I store my drawing supplies in and watercolor supplies. Um, lately, I've gotten a little fascinated with vintage picnic boxes and I mean, picnic bags, baskets, excuse me, and they make great little storage containers and fun and cute. Um, I've got a lot of books. i got a lot of canvas stored under here. So those are great. You know, this pandemic, y'all keep the toilet paper. Just give me canvas, right? I've bought so much canvas this spring. As I'm over here, I think I'll show you some of the things I've been doing this um, during the quarantine time. Um, you know, there's, you're just stuck in the house and it's been great as an artist because I have all this time. Thankfully, I haven't been sick and I hope all of you are well too. Um, it really is nice though to, to have this time of quiet and haven't we had the most beautiful spring? I mean, it's like God said, hey y'all, I know you're inside, but I'm going to give you the prettiest flowers you ever saw. So it's just been great um, to enjoy the beauty of the world and be out there with friends too, plein air painting. I've done a lot of that. Um, let's see, go down here. Um, I've been out in the country a lot painting with friends. Here's one that I did. Uh, then, you know, setting up a still life here in the studio. Some plein air, even if it's a little animal. I can't believe we were actually quarantined, even back in the spring, you know, back around Easter. So I'm showing this stuff I did a long time ago some that I just did little practice runs actually for today. These hydrangeas, I've done a lot of those this um, summer. Um, also a lot of commissions I've been working on. I've been doing a little study of Frank Vincent's work. And so I've done some fun um, 
just copies of his pieces and I've really done a lot of gouache this summer and played around with some old vintage family photos. That's uh, me and my little sister on Easter, like 1968. <laughs> um, just fun to do things like that that I normally don't have time to do. I'm gonna take you over here and say hello to John. Hello, John. <laughs> this is the chair I sit in when I'm working on my gouache and I store it in this old, old um, container, as you can see. So these things are so handy. Um, I love these old vintage things in the studio. It's fun. I also have a show coming up in September at Stonehenge Gallery with Carol Jones, Julia Wallace, and Camilla Armstrong. So I've been working to get ready for that and have just been un enamored with magnolias this summer. They were so beautiful. Um, even did a self-portrait at one, one point this summer as a little challenge, working on some skyscapes. And speaking of storage, I just wanna show you this thing that I got at like, I think a Pier 1 years ago. But you know, if you have a handy someone in your family, you could probably build this. It's, it's this big table that has shelving on the ends. And of course I, I've used and maximized the top of it with all sorts of things. But it has, you know, these areas on the side where you can put even more canvas. <laughs> I use these, um, the molding to pop paintings on. You know, they're all, they're all over the walls. I just, it's a great place for them to dry. So just stick a nail in the wall of this room. <laughs> this room will need some serious repair if we ever leave it, I'm sure, because the carpet and the nails in the wall, you know, are all over the place. But it is what it is, and I, it serves its purpose for me. And I love um, being here and painting away. I have one little window over here. My studio's in the corner. It's a little bit more cramped right now because of, you know, the setup for this and the still life table. But it, again, is just fine for me. So, there we are. There's the studio. I'm so glad you could see it. Y'all have to come see me someday. I love some company. So I have a couple of chairs in here. You can sit and chat with me while I paint. But today, I thought I'd do a quick, I mean, very quick. We don't have much time, I know. I wish we did have a little more time. But I just thought I'd do a quick little demo here of this setup. And I will tell you, it's inspired by one of my favorite artists, and that is Marjorie Hicks. She's in Nashville. And y'all follow her on Instagram and Facebook. She's something special. And um, she taught me, I took a class from her last year, and she taught me about using her limited palette, okay, which I'll show you here. And she uses ultramarine blue. That's what I have on my palette today. A cad lemon, okay. And these are gambling. I like to use gambling paint. Permanent rose, which is not a gambling color. Win Windsor Newton is where you find that. And just white. But I will tell you that I like to add a little bit to it. Just um, sometimes I feel like the darkest dark I can get is, is a little too purple. So I like to add something. Like this is a transparent brown, I mean oxide brown by Rembrandt. Sometimes I might use transparent red earth um, or throw in Indian yellow. It's a transparent yellow. Just something to warm up that darkest dark, okay? And then, you know, just a few little extra colors every now and then. Yellow ochre. I've got some Viridian out on my palette, okay? Um, one thing I've started using a little more frequently is titanium buff. Oh, excuse this palette. Oh, isn't that crazy? I'm so sorry. It's so messy. Um, I got a new one this week, and I can't wait to break it in, and this one will just <laughs> go by the wayside, I guess. But titanium buff is just a nice little, um, you know, addition to white um, that I like to use and get some, you know, interesting effects. Um, I've gone ahead and pre-mixed secondaries. I've mixed my green, my purple, and my orange with those three colors, okay? Y'all feel free to pop in and ask some questions. Uh, John is gonna kind of man things for me and holler out any questions if you have them. Um, Marjorie Hicks, she does these little studies every now and then, just morning warm-ups, and that's kind of what we'll do today. Uh, kind of inspired by this one that I did back in the um, winter, and 
then last night I just did a little practice run you know when you're going live on Instagram you want a little practice so there's a little practice run of this one and then a while ago I just did a little sketch just to get in some darks and some lights in here okay and of course I prayed over this painting like I pray over all of these paintings and you know and I want to show you this first too that I have on my easel the one who called you is faithful and he will do it first Thessalonians 5 24 this has gotten me through a lot of, of uh, uneasy days at the easel when I feel like I just don't know if I can paint anymore you ever have that feeling if you're an artist out there like you just um the gremlins came and took your abilities away during the night and you scraped off everything that you tried to paint that and then going through this pandemic you know you just think how am i going to make a living and it's just been fine everything's been fine so um i am so thankful and that really has helped me get a lot of focus when i come over to this easel so i'm going to just start off with a little mix of um maybe some of this orange and purple just to get a little neutral in there look at this brush i gotta show you this brush i have it is look at it it is a nub, isn't it? But it's really good for, you know, drawing in and stuff. So it is worn down to nothing. So first I'll just make a little mark. I wish I could show y'all the setup as well simultaneously, but um, that's just with my limited abilities here, maybe next time. <laughs> but right now, this is, this will have to do. Um, I'm just gonna make a bottom mark here, see? Because sometimes you'll start in with flowers. If you don't do that, you'll start with flowers and leaves and then you run out of room and your your vase is um, nowhere to be found. So, um, it is interesting to me, I wish I could show you that this leaf is so large that it covers up most all of the, um, of the vase. So, you know, you, when you're drawing and painting, you, um, there are so many things you think, you know, you have a concept for a leaf shape. A leaf shape, for example, right, you think is shaped like this. Um, maybe you think a flower, you know, is perfectly round or looks like this, you know, many, and oftentimes that center is way over to the side, not in the, I call it a center, it's not the center. Um, if you're looking at it dead on, it's the center, but you've seen it at an angle and it's way over here off to the side or somewhere. So anyway, all that to say, we have a concept of a leaf shape and a flower shape. It's just something where, you know, we've had in us since we learned to identify things as babies and you have to fight that. Um, you know, so this leaf shape may not be a common leaf shape at all. The flower that you might think of as round is really this lumpy, odd sort of sort of shape, okay? So there's another flower here. And then what I'd also do is just go ahead and get in my shadow area. I do have kind of an odd lighting situation in here today because I have the light from the window, you know, that's on this side. And then on this side, I have a little lamp. And up here, I have an overhead light. So it's kind of all, um, you know, all over the place. Um, what I do, though, is when I'm in a situation like that, and wouldn't you know, you know, it's luck would have it. It's uh, usually in a workshop situation where I'm trying to show something and my light is all over the place. And um, so what I do is just look for the strongest light source and go with that. So what I'm doing right now is just blocking in where I see shadow, and that's pretty much the way I start everything, okay? I hope you can see as you look at my work that um, what I'm really after is an effect of light, and that I love to paint all sorts of subject matter, and the common thread of all of that is light. Um, you know, I don't care what it is, if light's falling on it, I'm telling you, it's gonna be beautiful. If it's trash can, it's gonna be beautiful. So I, um, I just love to look for those lighting situations that just make my heart sing and you know natural light is usually what does it and um i do wish if i could change anything in here i wish i had more light um you know i'll work by the by daylight and when that sun starts going down i just have to stop or if it gets you know we have a thunderstorm come up and the summertime then I just have to 
reel it in and um, go do something else. You know, that's when you go do laundry, right? <laughs> so anyway, uh, it, it allows me to, I guess, not get too obsessed with it and spend all my time painting. And I can actually cook John dinner, and, you know, go water the plants or something. Um, so I'm laying in some um, some of these shadow areas over, in color, over the area that I just blocked in in a neutral. This is really, it's more shadow than I indicated here, really. Okay. I'm just kind of scrubbing in. I'm not using a lot of paint. And I'm painting on uh, an oil paper, too, today, just for this little demo. Um... Right now, what I'm doing, you can't see it, but I'm mixing up a little neutral um, to lay in this shadow side of the base. And what I do for that is uh, mix two complementary colors. It could be purple and yellow or orange and blue. Um, I won't say War Eagle after that. I know there's probably some Alabama fans on here. <laughs> I love y'all. Takes two to make a world go around, y'all. And best wishes to everybody with for. Uh, a good season this year. Maybe, maybe we have one, I hope. Um, so blocking in some um, shadow here. And that's pretty much all of the shadows uh, that I see in this, in this uh, still life setup. So now I can move into some midtones. I can go into some light, you know, whatever I want to do. I did learn from somebody, um, I think it was Susan Lyon. She's so, she's so amazing. In one of her videos that you find the most beautiful color at this little bugaboo line. This, uh, where light and shadow meet, you'll have the most rich, pretty color, um, which makes perfect sense, right? Because if the light can't get down into the dark, you know, uh, you can't see that color. It's just dark, dark, dark. And then when you have something blasted out by light, then you have um, an elimination of color. So, Right at that middle mid-tone, uh, you get that pretty, pretty color. So I'll just ease on into some light areas here. And this is a very simple, you know, kind of posterized block in of this subject matter. But it's coming together. Um, nothing like paint live, right? I'm trying, praying that it, <laughs> that it all turns out to be something. Um, you know, another thing that I think about as I paint is um, cool and warm light. Um, in the inside, I usually have a cool light situation. So I'll have cool light and warm shadows. And outside on a sunny day, you're gonna have warm light, cool shadows. Um, so as I go into the light in this indoors, I'm gonna get a little bit cooler, okay? And keep my shadows warmer. So, does it mean that it's necessarily blue in the cool? No, just cooler than the shadow. Um, a shadow could be purple, but it will lean towards red in a warm shadow situation. Um, that used to really confuse me. I think, well, how, you know, does that mean that all, all of the light is blue, all of the shadows are orange? No, just, it's all relative. Now see, I put that in the light, it's too warm. Ah, let's take that off. It jumped out at me right away as soon as I did it. I need to wash that little brush better. Okay, so I'm putting in some white, let's say just a little blue and a little bit of permanent rose over here in this mix that I wish you could see. And let's see how that does. Okay, that's kind of pretty. It is, it's nice to uh, add in to a little, um, same value, but just a little color temperature shift. Just leans a little bit more on the blue side than that pink. And I like to go around and just make little adjustments. You know, if I had a whole lot of time um, to complete this, that's what I do. I'd go in a little more and more, making tiny adjustments of cool and warm next to each other. But that does, I hope that is translating on the camera okay, because you do, it does give you that neat little effect. When you put that blue next to the pink, um, I could come in even with a little bit more orange, you see right there, and uh, it's the same value as that rosy color. 
but just warm it up a little bit. Okay. Okay. So let's see what time we have. 10 minutes, right? Okay. All right. So I'm just mixing up a little bit of a lighter value of the green. I'm going to cool it ever so slightly because I want to make something that will be in the light area. Okay. And you can see how I'm holding my brush like this and not like this. Okay. It's not a pencil. And I want to I want to loosen control over it, make it loose and painterly. So I'm holding it back, way back. See on the end? That's why they make them long, y'all. Okay. So um, I do want to warm it up just just tiniest bit. Okay, there's this one leaf that's really getting some light. You know, when I did this sketch, uh, I wanted to be careful that I didn't have, uh, you know, a hydrangea end right here, and I have a leaf ending right there. I may have to do something like that. Uh, that's kind of right in the middle. I may do something to adjust this. May not have time to do it with y'all watching, but uh, don't want to put all this uh, interest in the center of the painting. Okay. Now, let's see. Let's do something with this, this, I guess, table, floor, whatever it is. Who knows? You know, you can form this line. You see how I made this, this shadow shape here? You know, when I first did this, it was kind of thick, right? I'll repaint it so you can see. Then you can come back in with your table or whatever the color you're going to use for the base here and form that line by painting up to it so I can make it skinny skinny even if I don't have a skinny skinny little brush you can make that line nice and thin by painting up to it and holding that brush back as it keeps the um, the line from being so perfect and you know just just so maintain some looseness hey paint it with your left hand and see how that goes that'll get you loose right okay um I mean, I just feel like I need I want a little springy color in here or something some kind of yellow course that works pretty well with that sort of I'm leaning towards purple with these hydrangeas here and that looks uh, works well with that um, there's a little highlight it's in a funny little place it's about right there I don't want it to be too close to the middle though yeah let's try that again <laughs> I think I read somewhere that sergeant would you know how he has these masterful brush strokes right where they ju just looks like he just stepped up there like a sword and just threw that brush stroke on there and then I read oh hey you know you do that five times and uh so it makes you feel a whole lot better not that this is sergeant but <laughs> I love reading stories like that and then one time I read that he said the the best I think the best nose he ever painted was with his thumb and <laughs> finger painting will, I'll take you a long way too right <laughs> but these little uh, little highlights like that, oh, I love, 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 love to just put them in. You know, you don't need a hard line uh, to, to see that this is not the same as this. There is a faint line there, but I could just have an implied line by painting, you know, a slightly different value, a slightly different color temperature, just so that you get just a little separation. And that to me is the beauty of painting where uh, it's just the subtleties there. You do not have to spell everything out for your viewer. Uh, dragging that down now has pulled in a little bit of this light, a little, you know, like you're getting some reflection of this color over in here. Now, did I pick up that color and put it there? No, I wish I could take credit for that. It just happened and I'm glad it happened and I'm glad I recognized it and we'll just leave it. Um, you know, as things, when they cast shadows, they, uh, um, I see that, Laura, that little highlight, zing, right? Um, when you get this cast shadow, it's going to be really dark, right, you know, closest to the thing casting the shadow. And as it goes away 
from the object casting the shadow, it starts to pick up this ambient light and will get a little lighter uh, shadow wheel, let's see, and a little, it just a little fuzzier, okay? So we have a few minutes left. Uh, I thought what I would do is throw in some of these uh, these blue marks on the on the vase real quick and take a little time for a few questions if y'all have any. Um, I have this brush, so it's a great one. Okay, rosemary brushes, right? Uh, they're in England. They're I'm just been fortunate to be at some conventions and things where they were selling them. Not that you can't get them you know, order them from overseas. But anyway, I got to look at them. This, look at that rigger brush. It's so nice. They have such good brushes. So they're great for making these little calligraphic marks. Um, you know, again, I'm not looking at the little floral pattern on this vase. I'm just going to just swing in some stuff and just play with it. Okay. Just make some marks. And it just takes a little hint. But I'm thinking while I'm doing this, see this little shadow here? I'm marching over into the light over here. So I'm gonna get a little lighter in value, a little lighter blue as I come over here. Oh, I say I like that. Um, that's all it takes, isn't that crazy? It's just not much of anything needed. Okay, I can put some of this blue around maybe if I want to. You know, so many things you can do. You can come in with a um, palette knife or uh, these marker. These are so cool. Let me show you these while I'm here with you. Jerry's Artorama, these jumbo jet uh, sticks. Jumbo, can y'all see that? Jumbo jet. All right, this is a sepia one. But if you want to come in and make some marks, it it's really cool. Sometimes you can sign, sign with it. There we go. That's done. So I'll just flip this little thing around. We have a few minutes here. And um, let's see, I'll get you up close so you can see. Phew, turned out okay. All right, I'm happy. <laughs> Y'all are so sweet to join in. Does anybody have any questions about anything? I'm happy to answer anything. So much fun uh, to paint and to start the day doing this, uh, these little warm-ups and things. Um, I love to get a uh, watercolor out or some gouache out and just play around in the morning and just kind of, you know, get those creative juices flowing and any sort of um, anxieties I might have about approaching this easel in the morning just disappear. And, and I can tell you this, in these times when you're um, concentrating on creating something and something beautiful and you get lost in it and your mind you're not focused on the news and the bad things going on which a question. Oh, let's see John says we have a question oh I see what's your uh, most used brush size you know what I would say about a, a six something like that just a good medium size I tend to paint small because I got a small studio so I don't really paint really big um, I love painting these little things uh, but just so much fun to, to do this. And, and like I was saying, you get, you do just get lost in this work and, you know, come up for air around lunchtime and, you know, sometimes check the news and <laughs> always regret that I did. Um, I, especially when you're outside painting and I'm just so blessed to have some sweet, sweet friends to go paint with on occasion. Of course, when the, you know, heat index is 120, you don't really want to get out there. But it is, it is the joy of my life and glad to share it with y'all today. So I'm so grateful for you being here. Hope we can have some workshops come up soon and we can be together and painting away in a cool environment and safe environment. So in the meantime, y'all just um, enjoy this weekend and make something today. Just create something. It'll make you feel better. I know it will. Thank you so much for, for joining us. See you later. Bye.